one of the reasons why we started Break the Cycle was to help people understand some of the mental loops or behavior patterns that they were experiencing. And the reason why we did that was because Viju and I went through that journey uh, ourselves. In my case, one person who helped me out the most uh, was Tanvi Bhandari, who happens to be my guest for this episode. She's been a counselor uh, for since 2012. Uh, she's started her own counseling uh, organization called Anchorage with, for the past three years. And she's been one of the major reasons why I consider myself sane. Uh, we talk about uh, self-love. We talk about codependency. We talk about how a lot of these, a lot of the attachments that we have to certain identities uh, all come down to how we've kind of given away our power. So I hope you enjoy the episode. Uh, I do want your feedback on this. Uh, and uh, we'll try and get her on for, for a few more. But for now, uh, I hope you enjoy this. What's up, Doc? Hi. Hi. <laughs> finally. I, finally. I told you we we're going to go right off the bat on this one. Yes, I, I expected <laughs> that to happen. But it's been a long 20 days getting 20, here. 20 plus days getting here. How yeah. many times did we try and record this? I think at least twice. At we least made concrete plans, plans at least twice. twice. Yeah, and we've spoken about this every single week, at least twice a week. For a month. For a month. Yes, more than that. Maybe a month and a half. Oh, I wait. Feel like yeah, a month talking, and a half. Yeah. We were talking about this before we even started. Yes. Yes, right. Yeah. yeah. So third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you. You know exactly what we're going to talk about. Yes. Um, I wanted to do this as naturally as possible. Sure. Because it's not every day that you get a mental health professional to kind of be on a mic and not be formal. At least not in my experience. I've never been formal, so it should be easy. <laughs> it should be easy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. So, first off, straight up, what do you think uh, break the cycle means? And how many cycles have you experienced, at least? Because I'm sure you've seen, you've met a lot of people, mm -hmm. right? Who, who come to you, who reach out to you, because ultimately, and this is me generalizing. Right. Um, we're all going through some pattern or a mm -hmm. repeat pattern, which we've come to realize that it's a pattern and it's very hard to break out of it. Coming to realize that you're in a pattern that needs to be broken is a big step. Right. Which not everybody goes through. Mm -hmm. So that itself is step one. <laughs> step one is identifying what needs to... No, step one is identifying something's wrong. Right. Step two is identifying what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And step three is trying to figure out what to change. So it's... It's not easy mm -hmm. and most people don't realize it till something really, really goes wrong. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody sits down to introspect, mm -hmm. which is something that we should all be doing regularly. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time, we don't even realize that we're in a bad pattern. Right. Well, let, let me go back to your first question. Let, mm -hmm. me, let me break this up into two yeah. statements. Right. And let's just start with... Um, when a person is conceived, okay. so perception, information gathering, processing of information starts then. Mm -hmm. We have too many stories in all mythologies right. that we cannot contest the fact that the minute a baby is conceived, mm -hmm. um, information gathering starts that second. Okay. Right? Everyone yeah. you could figure out how to get through a chuck mm. review. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so I'm not even going that far. I'm saying um, the child the mother is carrying picks up on impressions, picks mm -hmm. up on voices, picks up on who they like, who they don't like. Right. Through what the mother is feeling. Mm -hmm. So it all starts then. And then they go through nine months of this really comfortable, lovely environment. And then they just burst out into the really cold, unfeeling, crazy ass world where there's so much information. Yeah, it's there's a lot of noise, right? Yeah. A lot of noise, a lot of color, a lot of people, a lot of uh, temperature change. Mm -hmm. There's so much. Yeah. If all five senses are now working on over, or are overdrive, yeah. whatever the word is. So imagine a brand new computer. Uh -huh. Okay, so it comes pre-loaded with a bunch of apps. Right. That's what the newborn baby is. 
<laughs> okay basically yeah. right so whatever yeah. it went through from the what it ate what it thought about what music it listened to is the pre-installed applications that come with your computer or phone or whatever electronic device you want to think of yeah yeah i mean Now, that's an interesting way to look at it but yeah uh, sorry continue <laughs> So and I like to think of I like to think of you know this you yeah. we, I try to find metaphors which are easy to understand. <laughs> <laughs> so now every picture that you take every file that you create every excel sheet that you put formula in yeah. are tiny files that you're saving on your computer. Uh-huh. When you start, you probably have one or two folders. Right. And as time goes on, you keep dividing these files into multiple folders. Yeah. Right. So you keep reorganizing. Uh huh. Then once in a while, if you're good and you you like your computer, you're gonna do a defragment fragmentation process. Right. Right. So yeah. So what is that? That's basically making the information that you have more coherent. Right. Now let's look at it from a baby's point of view. Mm-hmm. Um. I grew up with a younger brother so I noticed him go, grew you know going through this and mm-hmm. figuring this out on along the way mm-hmm. and I remember that when he was about a year and a half old he had three words that he would use right everything round was ball okay everything humanoid was mama and everything hairy was bow bow <laughs> which made for some very very awkward conversations when we had hairy people in the house oh boy <laughs> So, okay, I imagine that now. Right? right. Yeah. Now, in scientific terms, these things are called meme. Right. Right. So, uh, basically, your your folders are called meme. Now, these meme keep growing and evolving, just like your folders do. Mm-hmm. Right. So, as we get more information, mm-hmm. we keep reevaluating the information that we have, mm-hmm. and then we stop doing that. Okay. Which is a bad thing. Mm-hmm. So we decide that this is, for example, we figure out, okay, this is mom. Right. Mom's gonna feed us. Mom's gonna give us comfort when we cry. Right. She's gonna be the first responder. Mm-hmm. And we just assume that's going to happen. Right. We stop trying to figure it out. So mm-hmm. as children grow older, they'll stop crying or asking for food when mm-hmm. they don't see their mother around because they know that. The primary the person, provider is not there, or the person who's there. Like if it's their sibling, they're going to be like, "Yeah, this person's not going to help me out." So there's no point in wasting this energy, right? Right. So now some of these things are really helpful. Mm-hmm. They help us in reducing time taken to solve a problem. Mm-hmm. But sometimes these things need to be reevaluated. But we've stopped reevaluating. We've just assumed this as fact. Okay. Those are the cycles that we need to break. Mm-hmm. For example, you go through a bad situation. You, I mean. If you really go into this, every stereotype, right? Every uh, every statement which is racist is based on one of these things. Okay. We picked up somebody picked up something. Somebody uh-huh. said, "Okay, people like this have this characteristic," and we just keep assuming that's what's going to happen. Our whole male female gender stereotypes are based on that, right? We just yeah. assume men are going to be whatever strong, not have too many emotions. Mm-hmm. will want to be the highest earner in the family we just right. make these assumptions right we're all, i mean that's that's largely what the conversation is right now right we're trying to fight that whole exactly so that's what i'm saying the fact that we stop reevaluating mm-hmm. is the problem everything okay. needs mm-hmm. to be reevaluated at some time or the other we need to update our system right our phone gives us an alert it's mm-hmm. time to install your next um i o whatever you know operating system operating system yeah but our brains don't do that mm-hmm. so that's basically um how the brain works when mm-hmm. we're talking about cycles and patterns mm-hmm. now um but how do we get people to that point because again um i think you would you would reach that stage of evaluation or introspection also if you're aware like how do you bring them to that awareness we love thinking that it's everybody else's fault and the whole world is against us. Okay. So yeah. That's the thought. Mm-hmm. Right? That's the thought that that's the first thought that needs to be challenged. When something goes wrong, when you find things aren't working out, you have to have the courage to ask yourself, am I doing something wrong? Mm-hmm. Is it me? Mhm. And be honest with yourself to actually see if it's you and then that's your first trigger to understand if there's something that you need to fix. Right. Okay. Because that's the only way. Think about it. If you just sit with yourself and are constantly evaluating every decision, every thought, you're gonna drive yourself mad. Pretty much, yeah. There's yeah. a reason why therapy only happens one hour, one once a week. Mm-hmm. 
Because if you were to do that every day, every hour, think about it. That's terrible. Oh man, that's. It's it's torture then. It's no longer helpful. <laughs> if you're second guessing yeah. everything, mm-hmm. what can you accomplish? Right. So the idea is not to just sit and and reevaluate whether you should drink water or you should drink soda or whether you should drink whiskey or whether you should drink beer. Mm-hmm. That's not the idea. Mm-hmm. The idea is that just when something's like, when something's going wrong or when mm-hmm. you're feeling like you're you're um, you are meeting like you know so many people say that um, you know people over here are just like this or. People these days, my day is not good. You know, people are just <laughs> not reacting positively right. to me. Yeah. And that's we just put it on the other people. We say, okay, day is not good, and other people are reacting negatively to me. We don't say, am I doing something which is causing this reaction in more than one person? Right. That that actually makes sense because I mean, statements like this, uh, there are a lot of those. I spoke to one of my previous guests, who who you're you who you also know, uh, Rajneesh. Right. Right. Who. in case people have forgotten was a competitor uh, is now and uh, working towards being an ultra marathon runner is, is a coach and a lot of what a lot of the statements that we've heard are oh my god you're so talented or oh my god you kind of you guys are so driven or so committed um we could never do that so that kind of does sound like it's an automatic preconditioned excuse that we're giving ourselves yeah absolutely you've just you've decided mm mm-hmm. Happiness How do you break is out of that? Okay. Success is a choice. Right. Now, I am a counseling psychologist, and I say I want to be an astronaut mm-hmm. in two years, mm-hmm. and then I say it doesn't happen. So success was not a choice. That's mm-hmm. not being realistic, right? Right. The oldest fable, "God helps those who help themselves," does in fact work. Okay. So you have to decide you want to do something, and then you have to work towards it. Mm-hmm. So that brings me to another point that I love talking about in sessions, which mm-hmm. is agenda focused behavior. Right. If you've decided that you want to do something, mm-hmm. then you need to work backwards and understand. Okay, what is it that I need to do, which is going to help me get this goal? Mm-hmm. What ends up happening is we start focusing on smaller goals. Okay. Right. We start. We we break down our goals, which is what we need to do, mm-hmm. and then all a hundred percent of our attention and our focus and our energies go mm-hmm. towards achieving the f- the first level of goal. Right. And that may not be always in line with the. In the, l- the eventual, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. For example, I once had a client who wanted his his thought, his goal was to gain more respect at work and have people understand that he is of value. Okay. And one time, his boss kind of shouted at him in a very you know mean way or whatever, mm-hmm. in a very rude way, and he went and threw a tantrum in his in her room that you know how could you say this to me? Why would you talk to me like this? This was so rude. I'm so insulted. Mm-hmm. Now. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think the boss is going to think about this person? Mm. The Egoistic, boss is going to think right tantrum, and yeah. sensitive. Sensitive, yeah. Not worthy of respect that comes with being a mature uh, in control individual. Right. So he basically lost what he was trying to achieve mm-hmm. right there. Yeah. All right. It brings you to an interesting point because um so you and I have gone uh we've had this discussion and we've gone back and forth about this as well. Um it's the whole point of being in control and understanding what your emotions are going to be and kind of either i mean figuring out a way to respond to that versus surrendering to whatever comes now you've said two things which are both different right you trying to be in control of your mm-hmm. emotions is mm-hmm. the worst thing that you can do it's what gives people thyroid oh boy yeah okay so it's it's been talked about a lot how mm-hmm. i have a lot of people in my family who are suffering from thyroid mm-hmm. and if you look at it from a spiritual energy block point of view it's mm-hmm. basically the block of the uh, throat chakra which happens right. when you don't speak your truth truth yeah which also happens when you try and swallow down your emotions mm-hmm. trying to be in control of your emotions is the worst thing that you can do okay what you need to be in control of is your behavior that translates into your reaction to your emotion i'm angry does that mm-hmm. mean i can go and slap someone no of course it doesn't. Not. yeah hmm. does that mean that i shouldn't be angry no mm-hmm. i need to own my anger right i need to release my anger mm-hmm. in a healthy way okay not in a way that hurts somebody else right mm-hmm. 
but trying to suppress my anger is going to hurt me it's going to give me high bp yeah that's that's true but i'm still going to go back to that argument right. of in control and surrender surrender to what so um i'm again going to go back to the first episode that i had with uh, with vijay raj in guy in case people you guys haven't heard it uh go check that out he speaks about letting go of the illusion of control that things are actually in your control nothing outside of your decision to behave in a certain way is in your control okay i agree with him completely on that point mm-hmm. you cannot control whether it's going to rain right or the sun is going to shine mm-hmm. you're not going to control whether you're you're going to meet 10 traffic lights on your way home or just one absolutely So if you sit around worrying and mm-hmm. stressing and putting all your energy towards having other people or other external things work for you mm-hmm. you're going to lose. Right. You're not going to win this battle. Mhm. And when you lose you're going to feel so terrible about it and so you know depressed about it that tomorrow you're not even going to try to do anything. <laughs> because you wanted it to not rain and it rained. How yeah. could that happen? Mhm. Yeah, we all kind of go like, "What is with this traffic? Why am I in this traffic? How could exactly. this person say this to Or me?" Exactly. I'm going to leave at this time, and leaving at this time means that I'm going to reach home in forty-seven minutes, mm-hmm. and it takes fifty-two. Yeah. And we're like, "Why? What the hell? How could this happen to me?" Makes me kind of go like, "All of us are mini control freaks in a way." <laughs> About everything other than what we can control, which is our reaction. Yeah. It's in my control to get irritated mm-hmm. or say. Well, there's nothing I can do about this. So let me spend the extra five minutes listening to good music. Mm-hmm. Or We learning, don't think or that. anything of that sort. Yeah. Or listening to this podcast. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whatever works, right? I mean, we're not yeah. thinking like that. We're thinking, what the hell? I wanted to reach home at this time. Stupid mm-hmm. traffic. Stupid person whose car got broken down. Mm-hmm. Stupid flyover that was, you know. whatever blocked for x reason mm-hmm. stupid security uh, checkpoints because it's 26 jan i mean it whatever yeah we're not focusing on is this in my control no mm-hmm. okay so what can i do about it mm-hmm. what can i do to make my life better right now yeah makes sense makes a lot of sense i hope i hope the message gets through though <laughs> cuz a so, lot of us i mean again you and i have had this discussion over and over again about a lot of, and we've met certain people as well who who would like whether they are aware of it or not essentially want to control every outcome that they're faced with which kind of makes me because i mean i've try, I, i've kind of worked in the competitive side as well i mean i was trying to prepare for a fight i took a back seat because i wasn't uh well but even there like even uh, even when you're training there's this whole point of you have to control your opponent but then you still can't control the outcome of what happens you can't control the opponent you can however control yourself and your reaction to your opponent mm-hmm. that's what you can control that's what right. the focus needs to be on mm-hmm. not on why did he swipe why did he swing right instead of left yeah. no if he swings right what should i do about it mm-hmm. how do i make sure that i still come out of winner right we don't think like that yeah we're sitting and saying Why did he not behave the way I wanted him to behave? Mm-hmm. Why did he not react the way I wanted him to react? Yeah. We don't think about this is what is reality. Mhm. What should I do about it to yeah. achieve my eventual goal? Mhm. We've actually you know just a week ago is when I actually realized that I was stuck in um a mental block a cycle whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. you remember we've been talking about intermittent fasting and yeah. my attempt to do it and exactly. i always said i can't do it uh-huh. cuz i leave uh, you know i leave for work at 8:30 in the morning i have to eat my breakfast at 8 and i mm-hmm. don't come home before 8 today i won't even reach home at 8 yeah and so i have to eat later mm-hmm. and then i realized why have i made these rules for myself <laughs> <laughs> I started eating a little bit extra for breakfast, so mm-hmm. I don't feel hungry till four four thirty, and then right. I have a really nice, heavy, whatever meal you want to call it at four thirty five. Yeah, there's no way I'm gonna eat dinner then. Makes sense. I make it in the eight hour window. I eat as much as I need to. I do not go to sleep hungry. Mm-hmm. But there's always a way out, depending on what I want to achieve. Yeah, there's always an adaptation response. There's always a solution. If right. I look for a solution, if mm-hmm. I'm looking for a way 
for the world to revolve around my problem mm-hmm. never going to be successful mm-hmm. if it happens it's pure luck and we should not count on it <laughs> <laughs> right so i'm not uh you spoke about one of the cycles that yeah. you've broken what are the other ones that you've experienced over a period of time if you're comfortable sharing well fitness has always been a big one mm-hmm. i used to be the person who used to well at one point of time i used to go to the gym for 15 minutes in a day right um, mm-hmm. <laughs> i used to jump on the treadmill for 10 right. and then i used to do 5 minutes of weights and i used right. to feel really good about it and by the way placebo effect or whatever it was i actually lost a lot of weight during yeah. that year yeah um but then for whatever reasons i was in a funk myself and i mm-hmm. moved cities and i stopped exercising and then i became the person who used to wake up at 9 every morning right and my mom decided we we live together so we wanted to exercise together mm-hmm. and she wanted to leave the house at 7 in the morning and that was like this okay like, how can you do this to me <laughs> this is terrible no way uh-huh. and i also remember that i used to get extremely mad at her if we wouldn't be home within like an hour and a half of us leaving because i'd be like i'm hungry i want to eat now right um i now in the summer months wake up at 5:30 wow How did you get to that point? Really it was just I stopped resisting. Mhm. I that's it. I stopped resisting. Okay. Because I had decided that I deserve to wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning at the earliest. Mhm. I just took that thought away. Right. I said I deserve to exercise and keep myself fit. Mhm. That's it really. I just changed the thought. <laughs> it sounds so it sounds simple and it yeah. is simple in Um I mean it's not a complicated decision to make. Exactly. Yeah. But it is not simple in application. Of right. course, I understand that. I went through many months of struggle with my own brain to get here. Right. Um Would you really, say then would you say then that the choice is simple but the application is not easy? I would say the application is one of the most difficult things to do. Right. Because we hate mm-hmm. making it about us. Mhm. In that way. Wait, you're going to have to refer you're going to have to explain that to me. So I know a lot of people we this is a common phrase right stop right. making it about you right we love talking about the problems right we hate talking about what we can do to solve solve the problem. problems yeah we want the other person to come come up with a solution or we want the other person to just change things so that it suits us right uh huh we yeah. hate being accountable and responsible we hate being accountable for our emotions <laughs> you yeah. did this so i'm happy You This didn't happen so I meditated. Right. We never own our emotions. We never say this happened and I got irritated because this happened. Mhm. I was really happy because X Y Z. Right. I enjoyed this. Mhm. So when it's me who's mm-hmm. doing the enjoying who's mm-hmm. actively participating in the activity right then I can just as easily enjoy something else mm-hmm. right so I can go from enjoying an ice cream and I can just as easily enjoy a piece of cake right but if I say you know um because there was ice cream in the house I had a lovely dinner then I've made myself dependent on that ice, ice cream, cream lying in the house yeah so I'm dependent on the ice cream the item being there i'm also dependent on the person who brought the ice cream mhm it's too much pressure to put on the ice cream or the other person i mean come on <laughs> what did they ever do that i'm making them responsible for my happiness yeah and then what also happens is absence of ice cream means absence of happiness right now ice cream could be an electronic gadget um a big possession jewelry a person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. our biggest addiction today is to people oh yes that relationship that person mentor that friend that friend that mentor yeah but where do you think that com- where do you think this advent of a very rather highly codependent society comes from because i've been on that side of the fence and we've we've spoken about that as well we have not evolved the way we should i mean i don't think we've we're, we're catching up with where we need to be is what my understanding of it is i think we've had this conversation before when mm-hmm. we were nomads and we were out in the forests mm-hmm. and we were just surviving for ourselves we realized that having a civilization having a group of people working together doing different tasks being dependent on each other and mm-hmm. all of them protecting mm-hmm. from the wild helped right so the thought of them before me mm-hmm. was helpful right so the collective before the individual yeah 
we're no longer living in that society. Mm-hmm. And we're also no longer living alone out in a cave where it's me before you. Right. Right? We're living in a situation, in a society where the thought needs to be me for us. I'm going to look after myself Mm -hmm. so that I can be a productive um, contributor to society. Okay. Because if I don't have anything, Mm -hmm. what am I going to give someone else? Makes sense. But what stops us from getting there? I guess it's just not reached the social consciousness yet. And Mm -hmm. I think that the more we talk about it, the more each one of us goes out and challenges people when they're thinking like this, Mm -hmm. the sooner it will happen. Right. It's a wave. It's happening. The fact that we're actually talking about this Mm -hmm. and putting it out there is a a sign that the, Mm -hmm. you know, the winds are shifting. Right. It just takes a while. Yeah. There has been this huge... uh, uptake in the conversation around self-love um i also feel that there's a lot of myths attached to it like what or rather a lot of confusions attached to it i mean like what i don't think we differentiate between self-care and self-love and what is your understanding of the two thought of two i mean terms? okay sitting down going for the massage is what is self-care and in my not opinion self-love? i would say self-care is a part of self-love So, self-care is an activity. Right. Self-love is an attitude. Right. Okay. So, how would you... So, they're very, very closely connected. Mm -hmm. And you can't have one without the other. You cannot care for yourself and you don't love yourself. And you're not going to love yourself without caring for yourself. True that. But, um, all right. Let's let's also look at it from the perspective of, I'm going to feed myself cake. Mm -hmm. And that's self-care and that's self-love. Versus, I'm going to get up and exercise. And that's 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 difficult. Why would I put myself through that torture? And I'm only bringing this out there because of a conversation I've had with someone, and this is just to kind of get that. So let's understanding. understand this concept. Right. I have high sugar. Yeah. Or I have high cholesterol. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna stuff my face with chips and cake mm-hmm. because that's self care or self love. No, that's a contradictory statement. Right. So what are you saying? Wait. What again? <laughs> I have just got my blood test back and I have high cholesterol and high sugar. Right. And I decide to go outside and buy a kg of cake and eat it all the time because I love myself. I don't think that that's self-love or self-care. Exactly. Right. So what are you, what what is, what is the comparison about exercise and eating a piece of cake? I mean, essentially. uh, It's also, so, okay, let me just not make you uh, search for it too much. (laughs) What I'm saying is context. Right. What is the context of a person saying, I want to eat cake versus a person saying, I want to exercise? Mm -hmm. Ideally, they should be able to do both. Ideally, they should be able to do both. That's correct. So there's this this book that a friend of mine just told me about and I'm going to read. And I I do believe in the idea. And it says the body keeps score, which we've talked about. We've talked about how the body... um, Everything that our mind does not want to process or isn't done processing, it just pushes out into a limb or a muscle or some part of our body. And our brain basically says, you know what, it's your problem now, you deal with it. And we are walking around with a frozen shoulder or or a bad knee or a dodgy elbow. Right. But it's actually something emotional that we're carrying over there. Right. Because then it may not be something anatomically wrong with you. See, it also works the other way. When you are mentally stressed and your brain is overworked, you are that much more prone to accidents. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily mean the absence of an anatomical problem. Mm -hmm. It just means that the brain was very much part of this. Right. The brain was so preoccupied that your self-preservation instincts were off. Mm -hmm. You were, again, dependent on something for... Yeah. No, I mean, so you, you, you hit your toe against the wall because yeah. you were not you were not working at optimum efficiency. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't mean that the toe is not really hurt. Yeah. Or doesn't need a plaster. Of course. Right? Or, yeah. or you've not actually broken your wrist or whatever. It doesn't mean mm-hmm. that you take away the biological, physiological aspect of it. Right. It just means that the mental aspect was a huge contributor to this physical aspect. Mm-hmm. Of course, there could be times when there's nothing physically wrong. It's just a mental um, creation, 
a projection of sorts. Right. So that's possible too. Mm-hmm. But let's I'm saying let's not just say let's not just put it out there that if you are suffering from a muscle pull or you've hurt yourself in some way mm-hmm. we're saying you know what it's just all in the mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, not it's not. Necessary. It's not, yeah. Not necessary. Yeah. But have you ever noticed when you're fighting that you end up getting hit more when your head's not in the game? Absolutely. So what does that mean? Absolutely. Like it takes me a while to kind of reset and go all right, get your head back in the game and I see an instant shift because then I'm more ag- um it's a double edged sword because there are times when i'm more aggressive so my self preservation is off it's more attack 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 and win um however there is that sweet spot where i just go okay i'm getting hit it's better to kind of just save myself get my head back in the game calmly approach this doesn't winning also involve not getting hit too much so that you're not Absolutely, knocked out yeah. so <laughs> you really can't win if you're putting yourself in too much danger yeah you know like yeah running out in battle and people keep shooting you yeah that you're not the terminator <laughs> you're not you're not going to win this battle yeah so absolutely there is there you have to be in a space where you can't get hit but you're hitting ideally yeah that's the the fantasy right mm-hmm. that you, you can shoot everyone around you but nobody can shoot you yeah that's that, that's yeah you're agile enough to just move or adapt to a situation i think that's that's what we're getting at Right. I mean, also because you're you're putting yourself in harm's way. Mm-hmm. There's a certain percentage of risk that you're taking, mm-hmm. so you are going to get hit. Right. But there has to be your self preservation needs to be enough that you don't get hit that much that mm-hmm. you stop functioning. Right. Because then you lost the game that you were trying to win. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Right. I'm going to move to my next question. Um. So a lot of people are, and you've you you've noticed this. A lot of people. are not really open to the idea of taking care of themselves mentally like for example reaching out i still feel that reaching out for therapy is uh, still considered something that's taboo as far as a discussion is concerned while we Because are talking a, a lot more about it who loves you so why should you need anyone else for support yeah how do we break out of that by realizing that when you have a cold you go to a doctor <laughs> So when you have a dysfunction of a mental sort, there's no harm in going to a therapist for a time, for mm-hmm. a while, till mm-hmm. you get better, till you learn what to do to take care of yourself. It mm-hmm. doesn't have to be forever. Right, but how do you identify that something is actually wrong in the mind? When you realize that you're not happy. Interesting. Elaborate. I want to achieve X. I'm not being able to achieve X. I've tried every way, and I realize that I am irritated, frustrated, not happy. So I look back and think about what I've been doing, and I realize, okay. So either I there are a couple of options. Either I realize I have no idea why this is happening, so right. I go to a therapist to understand what's going wrong in my life, mm-hmm. or I understand what's wrong in my life, and I realize that I don't know how to fix it. So I go to a therapist and say, "Here's my problem. Help me fix it," or I realize that. I realize what's wrong and I know how to fix it and I go ahead and fix it. So you don't mm-hmm. necessarily need therapy. Right. But there's no harm in going for a little help. It's like mm-hmm. a leg up. It's it's like taking one round of medicine and then you're good to go. Your immunities are back up. Mm-hmm. What happens is just like any other physical ailment, mm-hmm. when we have undergone stress for extended periods of time, our immunity, our threshold is very very low. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we need help for a while, for a couple of months, mm-hmm. to get back our immunity to help us see clearly. Because mm-hmm. imagine, imagine what you go through mentally in a physical sense. Right. You've been beaten and bruised. Mm-hmm. Every point is sore. Yeah. How are you going to go back into the ring? Mm-hmm. You have to heal. Yeah. You have to take a break. Yeah. And sometimes you need someone else to put bomb because you can't reach the spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what therapy helps you do. Mhm. It just helps you get back on your feet. Right. When therapy works well, mhm. Therapy is supposed to help you understand what went wrong, figure out what your way is of fixing it, and then be able to walk out of your therapist's office independently fixing things on your own. So you're basically mm-hmm. It's like when you break your leg, mm-hmm. you have a crutch for a while and then you let go of the crutch. The right. problem happens when you become addicted to therapy. Mm-hmm. When you never want to let go of the crutch. Right. How do you identify that? That ideally a good therapist should be able to. Right. 
there are so many clients of mine who have told them you know what i'm not going to meet you again <laughs> or let's go from once a week to twice uh, twice in a month or once a month or once right. in three months mm-hmm. come to me when there's a problem that you're not being able to fix yourself mm-hmm. um so i some people have this this urge to get out of therapy asap so they are right. stranded on their own some people a therapist needs to give a little bit of a leg up to all right makes sense right doc so um i see that a lot of this I so mean, you've called me doc and i just want to put it out there and put out the disclaimer i'm not a doctor that is true i call That's her doc out of habit <laughs> which has nothing to do with me or me propagating anything i'm really not a doctor yeah <laughs> i have not done a phd or an mbbs let's just put it out there yes <laughs> all right yes right. your question so again doc what's up right <laughs> right cuz you're bugs bunny i'm bugs bunny <laughs> damn um, what's up doc is basically yeah pretty much <laughs> all right so um i notice that a lot of it comes from the fact that we've given away up uh, given away up out to something like we're dependent on a lot yes. of things so for the person listening at home and this happens to be my second last question uh for the person sitting at home on their own what are the steps 2 3 5 whatever you uh, you can go with to at least start to realize that they've let go of that power when you find yourself saying statements like i couldn't help this mm mm-hmm. I had no choice. I had no choice. Right. I'm feeling like this because mm-hmm. I'm feeling like this happened so I'm sad. This happened so I'm irritated. So and so said this to me. So I am now so upset. So now let's let's actually talk about this for 2 minutes and mm-hmm. understand the difference. Right. People who are in our inner circle and there shouldn't be more than 5 people in your inner circle. Mm-hmm. When they talk to you, of course what they're saying is going to affect you when your when your parents turn around and tell you that you're completely useless. I'm not saying that you it should be water off a duck's back. Mm-hmm. It is going to affect you. Yeah. When someone close or someone in authority, so mm-hmm. someone who's a subject matter expert says, "You know what? So for example, you're an artist." Right. And a layman says, "Ugh, what's that?" Mhm. versus a senior artist says something to you the way you take these two pieces of criticism has to be different right it can't be the same mm-hmm. right because the other person doesn't know what they're talking about and one person does yeah or if my if my boss were to tell me that i'm who's never eaten anything that i've cooked before were to say you're a horrible cook and i go to sleep feeling terrible about myself mm-hmm. because she said i'm a horrible cook Yeah. She's not an authority. She hasn't tasted my food, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's coming from on. a place of assumption, and it's coming from. A, I need to be able to distinguish between whose opinion should mean how much to me on what subject. Mm-hmm. When I find myself feeling overwhelmed by other people's opinions, is mm-hmm. I think your best um, trigger to understand that you've lost power. Right. How do you start to reframe that then? like the you same statements to, that you mentioned right like just to keep it like really really simple i had no choice versus what or i'm hap- uh i'm happy because versus what so first of all own it mm-hmm. the the emotion needs to be owned i chose to be happy right when this happened mm-hmm. so that's when it comes to an emotion right when it comes to the thought of no choice mm-hmm. then it has to be what could i have done differently right and if there is nothing that i could have done differently and in all ways the same thing was going to happen like i hear this so often when someone loses a family member mm-hmm. i could have done something right so we have to go back and look at it and if there was nothing that you could have done there has to be a sense of acceptance that there was nothing and not frustration do. and anxiety right now this is sometimes difficult to do at home which is why i recommend you go meet a therapist mm mm-hmm. which is why i recommend everyone go see a therapist <laughs> well but at whatever point you need to yeah like for example not like a blanket way of everyone needs to go see a therapist but at some point or another yeah i feel if you need help ask for it mm-hmm. don't hesitate to ask for help yeah there's nothing to be you don't feel ashamed to have you know to do steam inhalation when you have a cold why do you feel ashamed to just take some time for yourself when you're feeling overwhelmed or stressed mm mm-hmm. 
why do you feel ashamed to go out and pamper yourself when you don't feel ashamed to go buy really expensive medicine to fix your or, or buy a really expensive wrap for your twisted foot yeah makes sense right doc my last question mm-hmm. where can these people reach out to you so how i instagram right. anchorage counseling services is my handle mm-hmm. that's anchorage like Like well, an the place yeah. in Alaska. I'm not in Alaska. <laughs> I'm in Delhi. There's some confusion regarding that, but it's really the nautical term of right. Anchorage. Mm-hmm. And then you can also reach out to me on my uh, my cell number, mm-hmm. which is nine eight one double eight nine two six one four. Right. Well, damn, Doc, this has been good. Yeah, it was an interesting <laughs> conversation. I think we covered a lot of things. We covered a lot of things. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. So much, it was my so much, pleasure. So much. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped you, uh, kind of break out of whatever uh dependency, or at least start to identify whatever dependency you have. And for anything, if you do feel that you need to ask for help, uh, I will be adding the number and the Instagram handle in the show notes. Um, if you have any feedback, as you know, you can find me on Instagram at Adhar Malhotra. And until next time, bye bye.